What is up Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell too for more Reddit stories. We post twice daily, so feel free to get involved. I'd also like to thank Pineapples and Bricks for joining us over on Patreon. To thank Edward Larson, Kony Chihuahua, Nikki W and Lobomir Jurak, thank you so much for your love, support and time. And let's crack on with today's stories, you absolute legends. <laughs> Now our first story does follow with an update and it's from Throwaway. Would I be the asshole if I asked a member of the wedding party to wear something to cover their hair? I'm getting married this fall, Rona willing. One member of the wedding party has neon yellow green hair and I said they plan on keeping that color for the foreseeable future, including for the wedding. I did not know this person had dyed their hair until after I'd asked them to be in the wedding party. They've dyed their hair a few times in the past, but never their whole head. More of just highlights or ombre or low-key stuff, and never a color this bright. So honestly, I didn't see it coming. Everyone else has more muted colors of hair, and the dresses slash tuxes are also on the grayscale, so it's going to stand out. I know it's just hair and it's their choice, and I'm trying to be respectful as possible. However, I also frankly don't want to look at my wedding pictures for the rest of my life and have the first thing I notice be their neon freaking hair. It seriously draws the eye. Idea we've come up with to mitigate this. One, make all the photos of the wedding party be in black and white. Two, ask the photographer to edit this person's hair to a not neon yellow green color which also may be an asshole move. Still feel weird about that, opinions welcome. Or three, the option someone proposed that I'm really conflicted about, ask the person to wear a wide lace headband or wrap that covers most of their hair and style it pulled back so it's more or less tucked away for most of the pictures. If it matters, we bought slash rented dresses and tuxes for everyone and we'll pay for this accessory too. And we are paying for hair to be done professionally for the wedding party because if I'm going to ask people to look a certain way for an event for me, I don't want to then force them to pay to do it. But I can't tell if this would be taking my input a step too far. It was a little awkward when I asked how long they were planning to keep their hair neon. And I just asked coming from a place out of curiosity, not asking specifically about the wedding. So I think they might get mad at me if I asked them to more or less hide it. Would I be the arsehole if I asked this person to wear a hairpiece slash style that covers most of their neon hair for my wedding? Edit to clarify. I'm asking would I be the arsehole for asking them to consider a hairpiece that covers a lot of their hair slash pulls it back from their face. Not telling them this is what I want or they'll be at the wedding. If they're not comfortable with the hairpiece, then I'd ask how they'd feel if there was editing slash color balance adjustment to the photos to tone it down. And if that's still a no, then we'd just pick black and white photos. We get one professional album with our photography pack, so we just make the whole thing black and white photos. We still have digital copies of all the photos, color and not. Just the ones we'd hang in our house and stuff would probably be black and white. No one is getting kicked out of the wedding for how they look. No one is going to be forced to do anything. And there's a very mixed bag of comments. So we're going to cover a couple of extra of those before we move on to the update. So one Mike Nation says, info, do you have a response ready for if she says no? Not the arsehole. Here, either way, it's your wedding so you can do what you want. But just curious, is this more of a question or an ultimatum? Meaning cover your hair or you're at the wedding party. To which OP replies, oh goodness, no. If they don't want to cover it, I will ask how they feel about the photographer editing to tone it down. Unless the consensus is that is also out of line to ask. If they don't like that, then we will just pick all black and white versions of the photos for the wedding album that's provided as part of our photography package. Eden Gone Dark says no one's an asshole here. There is a very big difference in asking someone to dye their natural hair color for a wedding and asking someone to cover up their dyed hair color, no less a neon attention grabbing color. You're not the asshole for your compromise ideas, nor would you be the asshole in asking her somehow to disguise her hair color with an accessory. Of course, she isn't the asshole either for dyeing her hair and neon color. Neon colors are awesome, just not always at weddings, lol. Snoo Donut says, maybe a tiny bit, but not a lot. As for your options, discuss your fear of having the unplanned yellow flash of color in all your pictures. Then propose the options you discussed here and see what they prefer. You may come across a bit of a bridezilla, but at least you're given several options. Neon yellow is pretty hard to miss. Born of Constance says, not the asshole. It sounds like you're trying to confront this issue as tactfully as possible. 
As a recent bridesmaid who dyes her hair unnatural colors, I asked the bride for her preference six months in advance in case she didn't want to see purple hair in her photos. It's just hair, but going full color like that and doing it well can get pricey. I don't think wanting a certain aesthetic for your photos is wrong, and I think there is a lot of ways to approach this tactfully with everyone okay with it. Depending on the bridesmaid's attitude, hope she sees your reasoning without taking it as some sort of personal attack. A wig for a day or one of your suggestions should be more than reasonably accommodating. Phil says, the reason people shouldn't wear white or outrageous outfits unless explicitly asked to do at a wedding is that it is one of the few days in the couple's life where all the attention should be on them, not everyone else. While I don't have a problem with anyone showing their personality through their hair, there is no denying that neon yellow slash green anything, hair, clothes, shoes is pretty attention grabbing, so I don't think your request would be unreasonable. And you will look back over your photos for many years, so I think it's reasonable consideration to want to be able to look at them without your attention always being dragged to the bridesmaid because of their bright hair. As long as you do it in a kind way, which sounds like you will. You would not be the asshole in my opinion, and your bridesmaid may have already considered it. One of my bridesmaids contacted me to say she had a particular haircut, not dyed, and it was quite short and asked if I'd mind. I told her, of course I didn't. She would look lovely whatever her hair length, but she had the foresight to recognize that she had a slightly unusual haircut and check in that I was okay with it, which was thoughtful. And one more comment before the update from Maybe Throwaway who says, why is this sub so weird about weddings? By asking your friend to cover their hair, you're expressing disapproval over their choices they have made about their body. The question is, are you comfortable doing that? Are you comfortable telling your friend with brightly colored hair that you're ashamed to be seen with them? That's the message you're sending by asking them to hide their hair. And yes, you are the asshole for thinking it's okay to tell someone else you're ashamed to be seen with them, even if your reasons for doing so are socially acceptable. When you're friends with someone, it means you accept them for who they are. Hair color doesn't hurt anyone else. If it was wearing a perfume that triggered migraines or made you feel sick or something, that would be a different story. If it was a tattoo of a hate symbol, that would be a different story. If you or your partner have a condition that causes eye strain that is triggered by bright colors, that also changes my answer, but it doesn't sound like that's what's going on. I'm not asking you to change your feelings about brightly colored hair. I think that using black and white photos is probably a good compromise. However, you're the asshole and a fairly big one at that for thinking you're being respectful by telling your friend that you're ashamed of how they look. Making your personal preference your friend's problem is the furthest you can get from respect. Yes, it's your wedding, but it's also your friendship. It's also how your friend views your relationship. It's also your friend's self-esteem and you're willing to jeopardize that over a color scheme that you'll use for one day of your hopefully long, happy marriage. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Now let's move on to the update to see what happened there. So updates. My original post didn't get a ton of responses, but I really appreciated the people who did respond and I wanted to share an update since the situation is fully resolved. While the top comments were, no one's an arsehole here or not the arsehole, I read every comment and I got a lot of different perspectives and I continued to think on the situation and reflect what you all said. I had a realization that I was putting all my stress and anxiety about life and the wedding as well as my frustration with some unrelated rude slash hurtful things my friend had done into my frustration with the hair situation because it was an easy thing to be upset about. I did some deep breathing and decided it wasn't worth saying anything about covering the hair. For my mental health, I just needed to let it go and let everything else go too. My wedding day was amazing. I'm so glad to not only be married, but also be done with the wedding planning and moving and all of it, cause holy heck, it was a lot. Some people said I was shallow to even care about the hair slash pictures at all. And yeah, I probably am, I accept that. The hair does stand out a lot in the, in the color pictures and the person had their natural roots, which looked absolutely awful. I'm not going to lie, I found it incredibly rude they dyed their hair neon and they didn't even bother to make sure it was maintained for being in a wedding. But in black and white, everything looks totally fine and I love black and white pictures anyway. They also got married a bit after my wedding. The bitchy voice on my head couldn't help but note that they bothered to get their roots done for their own wedding. I complained to my husband a bit in our hotel room after the rehearsal. Got it out of my system. Had a great time in their wedding. I guess all this to say whether or not it would have been an asshole move to ask them to cover their hair. As people pointed out, it wasn't worth it. The hair did bother me. I am a little shallow. I am a little selfish. But it wasn't that big of a deal as I was making it out to be. It was better to keep all shallow, selfish and bitchy thoughts to myself and my husband. Work on acceptance and move on. 
Writing this is my closure. I will spare no more thoughts or energy for the neon hair. Thank you all for helping me find perspective. And I think that's a pretty positive update as updates go. And I especially like the bit where you talked about your own mental health and you, and you realize, you know, I'm thinking about this too much. It's not good for my mental headspace. So let's just forget about it. Let's move on and just not worry about it anymore. And it's good for your own mental well-being. And the fact that you went, you took your husband when, yes, you had a bit of an issue with the roots not being done, but she done them for her own wedding. And you wanted to have a little bitch about that, but you've done that in a private space with your husband. And you know, sometimes we all have a little moan. Yes, it's bitchy of us, absolutely. But we just need to get it out. There's no point in keeping it locked in your head and you've done it in a private space. You didn't do it to them. You didn't call them out. And I think that's, you know, pretty healthy. And if you want them roots touched up, send me the photos, I'll sort them out. You've seen my thumbnails. Like, <laughs> I can do a wild hair color too. Anyway, what do you guys think of our first story today? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next one. And our next story comes from Puzzle Headed Poem 170. Am I the arsehole for not accommodating a child on a plane? Lol, this is so stupid, but I was on a pretty long flight and I had the window seat. I don't know if it's important, but I had taken some edibles for the flight. Next to me is a mother and a child two, three years. The first incident happened when the mum asked if I would trade seats so her child could look out. I declined and said I would rather sit in the seat I paid for and then I proceeded to put in my AirPods and started to watch some new girl and I could hear the child cry and be upset that I wouldn't. A few hours later, I was playing a game on my phone and the child was very focused on it. But then, as everyone here probably knows, you get tired of mobile games, so I turned it off. The mum asked if I wouldn't mind keep playing as it was entertaining her son. I said no and as soon as I did, the child started crying and trying to grab my phone. I just simply raised my hand so the child couldn't reach, so I said in a louder tone, please control your child, which made the mum grab the boy and freak out at me and her screaming at me that I shouldn't be such an asshole and only think about me. Am I the asshole? Now, we automatically knew you wasn't going to be the arsehole. I knew from the, the, the very title you wasn't going to be the arsehole, but I always love these reads, especially when it's like a bit of plane drama or something like that, entitled parents on a plane. That could be a movie title, couldn't it? <laughs> but I always love something along those lines. Absolutely not the arsehole to me on this one. But Quizzical Bumblebee says not the arsehole. The mother knew she was on a flight with a child, so she should have brought things to entertain the child rather than relying on strangers. If she wanted a window seat, she should have booked one. She's entitled to ask you, but not entitled for you to say yes. I have said my piece says not the asshole. These kind of parents annoy me so much. Control and entertain your own kids. Yume says not the asshole. Just because you're all stuck in a metal tube doesn't mean you suddenly become a parent slash babysitter. Jesus. Cynic says not the asshole at all. Could you have been more accommodating? Sure. Should you have to? Absolutely not. You did nothing wrong. And one more from Reckless Reader who says, not the arsehole, if she wanted a window seat, she should have reserved one. And it's not your job nor responsibility to provide entertainment for her child. Now, as I said at the very start, we know what the verdict's gonna be on this one, but what are your thoughts? Have you had a similar entitled parent plane experience? As always, I would love to hear it. And let's move on to the next story. And our next three comes from Mama Bear It 33 titled, Am I the arsehole for calling my husband gross and banning him from bathing our son? Me, female 27, and my husband, male 30, have an eight-month-old son together. He's such a blessing, but as new parents, we're fairly exhausted and just trying to take it one day at a time. My husband helps, big time, and is super involved as a father, though he can be clueless at times when it comes to our son's care. I handle the big tasks like feeding, obviously changing and bathing, or he handles cleaning up mess, rearranging sheets and blankets, and doing some cleaning on the side. Yesterday morning, I went out to do some grocery shopping and left my husband with our son at home. Our son was sleeping and I told my husband there wasn't much work required from and I would be back in an hour, so he sat on the couch and checked his social media accounts. I came back an hour later and once I entered the apartment, I heard my son cry loudly. I entered the kitchen quickly and saw my husband placing our son inside the kitchen sink and looked like he was giving him a bath. I got mad seeing our son cry loudly. I asked my husband what the fuck he was doing and he said he was trying to give our son a bath. I called him gross and grabbed the towel and removed our son from inside the sink. 
My husband asked what I was doing and I lashed out calling him gross to think it's okay to bath our son in the kitchen sink and potentially harm him since there were glasses slash sharp tools nearby. I told him it wasn't his job and he shouldn't have done it and he's banned from doing it again. He threw a fit saying I'm treating him as less of a parent than me and dictating how he bonds with our son. We got into a screaming match and he called me controlling and selfish and that as a father he should do his fair share of our son's care. I straight up told him his attitude wasn't in our son's best interest and he should stop whining about what he gets and doesn't get to do since I'm not giving him more than he could handle, I assume. He stormed off and is still sulking and ignoring me till today. Am I the asshole? Was I too hard on him? And there's a couple of lines of a little update after, so we're going to cover that after the comments. And there's a couple of things that really jumped out to me in this one. As soon as I was reading, I was thinking, well, you know, my parents used to put me in the sink for a bath every now and then. So I don't see nothing wrong with it at all. It's just another place to bath your child. It's a smaller place, more contained, and it's much easier sometimes than running a full bath, you know. So from that perspective, yes, you're going to be the arsehole. And one thing that really jumped out to me was when you said that you're going to ban him from doing that again. You're going to ban which screams of controlling behavior to me. So absolutely, you're going to be the arsehole, in my opinion. It's just simply, it's his child too, and he deserves that bonding time if he wants. It's his child. But Shang and Baby says, you're the arsehole. Did you actually read this back to yourself? Kids have bathed in sinks forever. What's the issue here? If it's clean and his dad has given him a bath, what's your actual problem? Edit, now that you appear to understand that you were very wrong in this situation, I really think you should sit down with and apologize to your husband. You can't gatekeep his parenting like that and fly off the handle. If this is an indication of how you're going to be interacting around your son, just save the time and money and go get divorced now. I can guarantee if this attitude keeps up, he will eventually just leave and fight for custody so he can be an active parent to his son rather than your personal housekeeper. Essex Catwoman says, what on earth? Yes, you're the arsehole. Read the sub. So many parents upset that the other half isn't pulling the weight and here you are gatekeeping parenting. You aren't the only one who can parent, including caring for your child's hygiene needs. Would you rather your husband let babysit a mess, potentially affecting skin and well-being? Kids for generations have bathed in the sink, and even if your husband had not been aware of a small hazard nearby, there are ways to raise this without going nuclear. Chill, reflect, apologize. Perhaps share the bathing for a while so you can both learn and grow as parents tiredness is not an excuse however if you're finding yourself blowing up regularly being tearful feeling irritable and anxious or low more often than not you may benefit from seeing a doctor for support timmy foil hat says 100 percent you're the asshole he cleans and takes care of messes makes the bed you know cleaning taking care of everything baby related but not the baby itself he doesn't get the close bonding you get as you feed he doesn't get the cute cues of interaction and the fun little discovery noises as the kid bathes and it's changed you're so much of a helicopter mum, you won't let the kid's own dad do anything but watch from the sidelines and pick up after you and your son's fun time. He's not a nanny, he's not your housekeeper. Stop giving him jobs and let him be an actual dad. Completely chaotic says you're the arsehole. As a father though, he can be clueless at times when it comes to our son's care. I read this as, I think my husband's stupid and can't be trusted with our son, so I treat him like a child as well. Bathing a baby in a sink isn't gross and won't kill him, but if you have such a big problem with it, you could have calmly explained and show him how you go about bathing your son, since the difference is likely what had him crying. And one more from Daddy Mutton Chop who says you're the asshole. it's not his job. But it is, it's his child too. It's perfectly normal for babies to cry bloody murder when they're getting bathed. And in the sink, my parents bathed me in the sink up until I was two. Now, what do you guys make of this one? How would you deal with it in this situation? Do you have any additional thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. Prepare yourself for this next one. This story is from Monica on title. Am I the asshole for telling my insane coworker that she was not victimized by a literal baby? I, 28 female, work with another woman, 33 female, who is extremely pregnant at the moment. She's on maternity leave and is taking time off right now, but she is very dedicated to keeping our entire office keyed into every little detail of her pregnancy. She spams her ultrasounds and updates and baby bunk pictures to the office group chat constantly. She also has already had the baby shower and is requesting more stuff for the baby from us. She treats the baby like it's a child, playing Mozart and playing a math podcast so it will come out with a higher IQ. That's why I wasn't surprised when she showed up at the office for Bring Your Kids to Work Day to make it about her pregnancy. 
even though her kid has yet to be born. She started showing all the children her pregnant belly and telling them about it. My other coworker brought her baby too, who was a boy and one and a half years old. My pregnant coworker approached him and told him there's a baby inside her, pointing at her stomach. She was wearing a dress. The boy misunderstood since he's a literal baby and tried to look up her dress to see it. My coworker was shocked and screamed and startled him, causing him to start crying and shrieking and run to his mum. The mum was furious and started yelling at my pregnant coworker that she's a lunatic and saying, why is she even here since her kid isn't born yet? My pregnant coworker started screaming back that this is how predators start out and that she's a victim and the baby needs to be controlled. She turned to me for backup and I told her that she's insane, thinking she's been victimized by a literal baby. She yelled at me that it's no excuse and I'm enabling. Both my coworkers were asked to leave by security. I'm pretty sure a reaction to a baby looking up her dress to find the baby was insane, but maybe I'm losing it. Am I the asshole? I literally have no words. <laughs> but Lego Morph Lover says, not the asshole. He's literally a baby and doesn't understand pregnancy. It was in no way sexual. Her saying it was sexually deviant is in itself deviant. Moon Macabre says, not the asshole. A baby has absolutely no understanding of concepts like that. Probably doesn't even understand the concept of private areas yet. They don't even have self awareness. Your co worker is insane. Solid Upstairs says, not the asshole, your coworker is interesting, less insane and more self-centered. If she screams about a toddler looking up her dress, how on earth is she going to handle having a real baby that bites and throws things? I feel bad for a kid. And Butterflies and Broom says, I don't particularly like kids, but, but even I've had my fair share and under a certain age, they haven't been taught the taboos of society yet. If you have boobs and you hold a baby, baby will grab your boobs. They hold on to the necklines on your shirts, earrings, hair, skirts, etc. Whatever happens to be within reach and has a nice texture. They yank on them too. My older brother's ex-girlfriend's toddler's daughter once went up to hug him and face planted in his crutch. He immediately went, nope, and picked her up instead. Not the asshole. Lady is going to learn a lot about babies in the next few months and it's going to be a steep learning curve to knock that type of insanity out. Mother of Penguin says, not the asshole. You'd think someone that obsessed with their unborn child would have some basic understanding of child development. Jesus. And one more from Warm Enthusiasm who says, not the asshole. This woman and her future kid are going to fill the screens of Reddit for the next two decades at least. <laughs> and we can look forward to that. <laughs> what do you guys make of that one? Absolutely crazy one. But let's move on to the next story. Gee whiz. And our next story comes from Naprob. Am I the asshole for refusing to accommodate to my infertile neighbor? Sorry for the formatting and writing. English is not my first language. My husband, 29 male, and I, 28 female, have been living here for five years, ever since we were married. Our previous neighbors were an adorable couple in their 60s and 70s. We had a fairly good relationship and was kind of sad when they left. This year, I gave birth to my son six months when my new neighbors let's call them paul and anna moved in i was two months pregnant we weren't friends but we would say hi to each other here and there i sunbathe every day it's something i've been doing since childhood i was a very anemic kid and my mum made me do it to help with my anemia i don't even know if it works but it's a habit that helps me start my day this was not a problem until my pregnancy became apparent the left side of my yard has two kind of fences, one low, 1.5 meters, that used to have a hedge on the neighbor side. They cut that off, and one taller, 2 meters, in the rest of the backyard. It's hard to see it from the ground, but they can see our whole yard and part of our main floor from their second floor. When I was 5 months pregnant, Paul told my husband that my sunbathing was making them uncomfortable. I sunbathed in shorts and tank tops, nothing out of the ordinary. I just ignored them and kept to my routine. The following month, he did it again, until my eighth month. I was back from a walk with my husband and Anna was in the front of the house. When she saw me, she stormed inside and slammed the door. The following day, Paul came to our house and told us they have fertility problems and seeing me pregnant was making her heavily uncomfortable and I was an insensitive bitch. Currently, I'm working from home and the baby is so close to me in a playpen in the living room and we have another in the backyard on the terrace so I can have him close when gardening or just playing with him. Well, I made his wife uncomfortable again yesterday. I was in the living room playing with the baby when he knocked. He asked me to move from the living room because his wife could see me from their balcony. 
I told him to tell her to look in another direction and leave me alone. Today, my husband and I were grilling some meat in the backyard. The baby was hungry, so I started to breastfeed. When I looked at the house, Anna was on the balcony. She went in and a few minutes later, Paul was at our door again. I gave my son to my husband and I answered the door. Paul went off on me for breastfeeding in public. Again, my fenced yard and being inconsiderate. When he finished, I told him to leave us alone. Don't knock on my door again. And if his wife is so upset over seeing a baby, she needs therapy and not him harassing my family. And I will do everything I want in my own home. At the time I felt justified, but I was venting with my mum and she told me I was wrong and I couldn't understand because I never suffered from infertility and I need to apologize. So, am I the asshole? No, I always start off with that. I, I feel for anyone who suffers with infertility issues, it's gotta be a real struggle in life, but this is just not the way to deal with it, is it? You were totally right when it sounds like Anna does need therapy of some sort. As you can't just go through life and whenever you see babies, you're going to get upset. That, that's not helping anything, is it? Especially when you're in your own yard. She's looking into your house and seeing your child and then getting angry about it. And you've got to move around your house to accommodate someone else. Hell no. And in the bluntest, and it might sound kind of mean, it's not your problem. It's not your responsibility. She goes into town. She's going to see a pregnant person generally there's going to be a pregnant person around somewhere and she's going to get upset every single time there's going to be children everywhere babies everywhere come on now absolutely not the arsehole and your mum is totally wrong what the bloody hell is she thinking i totally get it that you know it's sad that people have infertility issues absolutely and I, as i said i feel for anyone that's that's suffering with this but you can't push that onto anyone else with plushy dior who says not the arsehole this isn't your problem it sucks for them but are you really going to stop being a mum at certain viewpoints because they can't have a baby she needs to stop looking at your home that's it and that's all who is amkono who says not the arsehole she needs a therapist and you need a restraining order against them maybe a walrus says not the arsehole document everything and and file a restraining order if this behavior continues. This is harassment. You are not being inconsiderate for living your life. The world doesn't stop spinning because this couple can't have a baby. Ad Cool says, not the asshole. These people need to mind their own damn business. That woman clearly needs therapy. I'd lock my doors and keep an eye on that baby at all times. Psycho. Resolute Muse says, not the asshole. They seem to have focused on you as the issue instead of their fertility. This is harassment. Start documenting every interaction, every slam door, every knock on your door. At some point, this will most likely need for you to involve the police. Undisclosed Bird says, be very careful with your baby. The fact is him every time hints at her being beyond unhinged. Moonlit Kitten says, not the arsehole, your therapy comment was spot on. How is she gonna survive in public if pregnant ladies and babies make her uncomfortable? Is her husband going to ask them to leave wherever they are? This is entirely a them problem, not a you problem. And one more from Worst Part of Valor who says, not the arsehole. The next time the husband comes over, tell him you feel uncomfortable that his wife is watching you in your own home and yard. You can be nice about it and say, you're sorry they have fertility issues, but point out that it's unreasonable to hide a child and his wife could benefit from counseling as well, as well as some tall plants on her balcony so she doesn't look into windows. Now, what do you guys make of this one? As I said, I feel sorry for anyone, but how could you deal with this? I think therapy is the only way that they could deal with it. Let me know your thoughts, verdicts, and comments on all of today's stories in the comments below if you choose to share them. And a huge thank you for spending 20 minutes or so with the channel today. If you have a moment of your time, why not click that subscribe button? As I said, we post twice daily, Reddit stories, and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for being involved. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Thank you.